Uh, hello, uh, this is uh, yeah, part one of uh, chapter two, uh, the uh, peripheral and central nervous systems. And that, uh, yeah, in this chapter, we're going to discuss the uh, structure of neuron brain, then the uh, methods in cognitive neuroscience. Now, the uh, um, uh, one of the uh, prerequisites for uh, this course is uh, yeah, the brain and behavior. So uh, yeah, I assume you have successfully completed the uh, brain and behavior course. And so uh, this uh, uh, chapter will be a uh, rather brief review of the uh, brain structure and the uh, function. So uh, number one, the structure of the neuron. So I assume that uh, yeah, you've already learned uh, the uh, structure and uh, of the uh, neuron. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, that, uh, yeah, this uh, picture shows the uh, structure of the uh, neuron, and that uh, yeah, so these are dendrites uh, through which this neuron receives a uh, input from a uh, neighboring neurons, and then here is the uh, cell body or soma, and of course the inside is the uh, nucleus, and then uh, here is the axon, and that uh, yeah, uh, through which the uh, uh, electrical impulse is transmitted to the uh, presynaptic terminals. And then uh, the, the, uh, at the uh, presynaptic terminals, the, uh, uh, some neurotransmitters will be released. And then uh, that, uh, when the uh, neurotransmitters are received by the uh, receptors of the uh, neighboring neurons, actually the dendritis of the uh, neighboring neurons, you know, the uh, information is transmitted from this neuron to its neighboring neurons. And the, um, uh, these are myelin sheaths, and that uh, yeah, here uh, the uh, node of Ranvier. Now, so uh, yeah, as you know, again, that uh, uh, dendritis are the uh, uh, structure through which this neuron receives the uh, input and then synapse output, and then the uh, uh, information transmission within this neuron is electrical, uh, whereas the uh, information transmission between neurons, in other words, you know, between this neuron and the neighboring neurons is the uh, 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 chemical uh, with the uh, neurotransmitters, uh, such as the uh, dopamine, serotonin, and so on. Now, uh, this slide shows a, uh, an action potential. Uh, so, at, uh, first of all, this is the level of the resting potential of this neuron. Uh, and at, uh, yeah, that is about a uh, negative 70 millivolt. And then, uh, that, uh, yeah, when the neuron receives enough excitatory signals or positive signals, and then the activation exceeds the uh, negative 55 millivolts, that's the uh, threshold of activation, uh, then the neuron fires. Uh, in other words, the neuron uh, sends a, a so-called spike. Now, so uh, from this point, uh, A through C is called a, a depolarization. Uh, here, that uh, the neuron uh, increase the uh, membrane potential from negative to a, a positive about 40 uh, millivolts. And then uh, C is the peak, and then it starts the uh, repolarization. Uh, that uh, in the uh, repolarization process, you know, the, uh, as you can see here, the neuron decreases the uh, membrane potential from a uh, about positive 40 millivolts to a uh, uh, going back to the uh, resting potential. Now, however, before the uh, membrane potential goes back to the uh, resting potential, you know, it, uh, 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 the membrane potential would become more negative than the uh, resting potential, and it, uh, that's called a uh, hyperpolarization. And then the membrane potential would go back to the uh, resting potential, that's uh, again negative 70 millivolts. So that, uh, yeah, this is the uh, one spike, this is the uh, one action potential. So uh, yeah, now this slide shows uh, yeah, some characteristics of action potential. Uh, the uh, first one is that uh, yeah, it is a, uh, called self-propagating, which means once it is set in motion, nothing else needs to be done. 
in other words, you know, once the neuron fires, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the spike will travel to the end uh, of the, uh, uh, the, the action. And then uh, the second aspect is that the, uh, the strength doesn't dissipate with the uh, distance that it travels. So in other words, you know, that the action potential is the uh, uh, kind of a solid tongue wave. And that, uh, so, you know, some actions are longer, some actions, uh, some actions are shorter, but uh, um, uh, the, uh, the spikes, uh, the action potentials would uh, travel to the end of the uh, axons. Uh, the uh, number three is that the uh, action potential is in an all or nothing response. So either the uh, cell fires or it doesn't fire. So in that case, the question is, you know, how does a uh, neuron respond to stimuli with different intensity then? Well, the underlying mechanism is called a uh, rate coding. Uh, that, uh, yeah, that means uh, yeah, the intensity of stimulus is coded by the uh, firing rate uh, up to about uh, yeah, 200 times uh, per second. So that means you know, the, uh, one action potential per five millisecond. So that, uh, yeah, it's very rapid. And that, uh, yeah, but uh, of course, you know, it, uh, yeah, this is the case with a uh, very intense stimulus. Uh, so uh, yeah, if the um, uh, the stimulus is not intense, then of course, you know, that the uh, firing rate would be much smaller. And uh, this slide shows uh, yeah, some examples of the uh, rate coding. So at, uh, yeah, in this case, oh, in A, uh, we have a, a weak stimulus, and in B, we have strong stimulus. And at, uh, yeah, on the x-axis, we have time. Okay, so at, uh, yeah, this is when the stimulus is turned on, and this is when the stimulus is turned off. So, uh, yeah, for example, you can imagine the uh, uh, visual information processing. That, uh, yeah, that you can imagine that uh, yeah, they are recording a, a neural activity from the uh, occipital lobe, for example. And that uh, yeah, uh, weak stimulus, so for example, you know, they presented a, a dim light. Okay, the stimulus is not very intense. And that, uh, yeah, in that case, you know, when the stimulus is turned on, you know, the neuron fires a number of times uh, per a uh, certain period of time until the uh, stimulus is turned off. Okay, now, however, in B, you know, this is basically the uh, same setting, same situation, except that uh, uh, the stimulus is very strong, very intense. So, for example, you know, that uh, uh, they present a uh, very intense light, okay? And then, in that case, when the stimulus is turned on, the neurons start firing. But uh, as you can see, you know, that the uh, neuron fires far more rapidly compared to a uh, weak stimulus, okay? So, that, uh, this difference is a, uh, uh, corresponds to the uh, intensity of the uh, stimulus. And this is an example of the uh, rate coding. Now, uh, we're moving on to the uh, brain. But uh, again, uh, I assume that uh, you learn the basic structure and functions of the uh, brain. So that, uh, this is going to be a brief review. So that, uh, first of all, you know, uh, um, the brain is a three-dimensional structure, as you know. So that, uh, when we uh, when we study the human brain, you know, the structure and the functions, you know, the, uh, we need to uh, uh, figure out the way to slice the uh, human brain or any brain in that case. And that, uh, yeah, there are basically three ways to slice the uh, brain. And the, uh, the, this is a uh, sagittal slice. And that, uh, yeah, in this case, you know, we are separating the brain between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere or left side and the right side. Okay, that, uh, yeah, this looks like you know, the, uh, the brain is uh, sliced right in the middle. But uh, yeah, in other words, we are looking at the uh, right hemisphere, the medial side of the uh, right hemisphere. OK, 
Okay, and then this is a, a coronal section. So, so yeah, this is the way to slice a, a brain uh, to separate between the frontal part and the uh, posterior part. Okay, and then this is a, a horizontal section or a, a axial slice. And that, uh, yeah, this is the way to slice the uh, separate the brain from the uh, uh, between top and the bottom of the uh, brain. And that uh, yeah, in this case, this is the anterior part of the brain, the frontal part of the brain. This is the uh, posterior part of the brain, the back part of the uh, brain. So at uh, uh, anterior means the uh, front. Or uh, when it comes to the uh, human brain, you know, that the uh, uh, rostral uh, means the same thing. And then the uh, posterior means the back. And then uh, also the, uh, the term caudal uh, it can be used uh, interchangeably with the uh, posterior. And then uh, superior means the top, inferior means the bottom. And the uh, dorsal means the uh, back of an animal or a uh, top of the uh, human brain. And then the ventral uh, means the uh, front of animal or bottom of the uh, human brain. And then the uh, medial side is the uh, basically inside and the uh, lateral is the uh, outside. So at, uh, in this picture, we see the uh, lateral side of the brain at the uh, lateral side of the uh, left hemisphere. Whereas in this uh, picture, we see the uh, medial side of the uh, right hemisphere. And then uh, the uh, triune uh, brain in evolution. Uh, this idea was uh, proposed by uh, Paul McLean. But uh, um, uh, so uh, he basically distinguished uh, among three parts of the uh, brain that uh, the brain stain, uh, brainstem and the uh, cerebellum uh, are called a uh, reptilian brain. Uh, in other words, you know, the, uh, the brainstem and cerebellum are the uh, most um, uh, the basic part of the uh, brain or the uh, oldest part of the uh, brain. In other words, you know, the, uh, reptilians and above, actually not just the uh, reptilians, but the, uh, and the uh, fish and amphibians are included too. But the, uh, uh, reptiles, you know, uh, the uh, reptiles and mammals and including humans, you know, we all share basically the uh, same structure and functions in the uh, brainstem and cerebellum. And then uh, the uh, second oldest part is the uh, limbic system, and that uh, uh, McLean called it a uh, mammalian brain. And that uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, this is a little bit newer, uh, more evolved compared to the uh, reptilian brain, but uh, yeah, uh, this is still a uh, subcortical structure. And then uh, the uh, cortex and the neocortex are the uh, newest part of the uh, brain. And that, uh, uh, this is the uh, human brain, according to McLean. But uh, uh, that basically, you know, the uh, cortex and neocortex, we share the uh, cortex and neocortex with the, uh, the other higher level primates, such as the uh, apes, you know, chimps and gorillas and orangutans and so on. Now, the uh, midbrain, uh, these, uh, this slide shows the uh, midbrain structures. At the uh, inferior colliculus, for example, it's for auditory information processing. The uh, superior colliculus is for the uh, visual information processing, uh, including a uh, orienting and a, uh, the eye movements and so on. And that, uh, this is a uh, part of the uh, so-called tectopavinar system. But uh, we'll come back to the uh, superior colliculus and uh, uh, discuss it more detail later. Okay. And the uh, hypothalamus uh, is associated with the uh, homeostasis, uh, which means you know, maintenance of the uh, equilibrium. 
and that uh, yeah, also related to a uh, feeding, drinking, regulation of body temperature, and regulation of the uh, hormonal system. And then the uh, thalamus uh, is a uh, sensory information relation, uh, and that uh, um, uh, that includes the uh, lateral geniculate nucleus, uh, abbreviated as a uh, LGN. And this is the uh, relay center of visual information. Another important structure in the thalamus is the uh, medial geniculate nucleus, uh, MGN. And this is the uh, relay center for auditory information. And that, uh, so uh, you can see the uh, brain stem and the midbrain in the, uh, this slide. And that, uh, um, uh, so, uh, 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 here is a, a medulla, and then here is a, a pons, and then the a superior colliculus here, and the inferior colliculus here, and then we have a, a thalamus here. And they, uh, also uh, in the uh, thalamus, uh, we have the uh, lateral geniculate nucleus here and here, and then the uh, medial geniculate nucleus. Now, uh, subcortical systems, uh, including the uh, basal ganglia and the uh, limbic system. Now, first of all, the uh, basal ganglia would include the uh, caudate nucleus, uh, ptamen and globus pallidus, and so on. And that, uh, yeah, well, they're basically associated with the uh, motor control, uh, especially involuntary movement and cognition and some emotions and learning. And the uh, limbic system uh, is uh, uh, closely related to uh, emotion, motivation, and the uh, emotional association with memory. And that uh, uh, the uh, limbic system uh, influences the uh, formation of memory by integrating the uh, emotional states with the uh, uh, memories. And that uh, yeah, limbic system uh, includes the uh, amygdala, uh, that is a, a very important structure for emotion, especially fear, and then hypothalamus, uh, that uh, uh, again that is related to a, a regulation of the uh, blood pressure, heart rate, and the uh, hunger, uh, thirst, sexual arousal, and sleep-wake cycle. And then the uh, cingulate cortex uh, is associated with the uh, motor control and selective attention, or monitoring maybe. And the uh, hippocampus uh, is a, uh, uh, critical for a uh, formation of long-term memory. And that, uh, in this slide, you can see the uh, basal ganglia and the uh, limbic system. So that, uh, uh, the uh, uh, ptamen and the uh, caudate nucleus are here. And then that, uh, this is the uh, amygdala. That, uh, well, as you probably know, the, uh, the name amygdala came from the, uh, the, its shape. That, uh, it uh, looks like an almond. Okay, so a uh, amygdala is a uh, almond-shaped structure, and then uh, here is the uh, hippocampus. Again, hippocampus is critical for a uh, formation of our memory, and that, uh, yeah, so the uh, amygdala, as you can see in this picture, you know, the uh, amygdala and the uh, hippocampus are located side, like side by side. You know, they're very close neighbors. And that uh, it shows, you know, that, uh, well, that's why uh, that uh, emotion and memory are so closely related to each other. And that uh, yeah, this is the uh, thalamus. Now the uh, cerebral cortex. Uh, that uh, yeah, well, that, uh, in order to discuss the uh, cerebral cortex, we need to distinguish between gyrus and the sulcus. Now, the uh, gyrus is a, a convolution or bump of the brain, whereas the uh, sulcus or fissure is a uh, valley between the gyri. 
Now, so the uh, gyrus is the singular form, gyri is a uh, plural form, and the uh, sulcus is a singular form, and the uh, plural form it's sulci. And you know, these words came from Latin words, that's why. Now, that, uh, there are three uh, major fissures in the uh, human brain. But the uh, sulcus and the fissure are also used interchangeably. But uh, sometimes, you know, big sulcus is a, uh, also called a fissure. So the uh, central fissure, uh, it is also called a, a central sulcus or Rolandic fissure. But uh, 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 this is the uh, fissure or sulcus that is separating between the frontal and the parietal lobes. Then the lateral fissure or lateral sulcus or sylvian fissure is another term uh, separating between the frontal and temporal lobes. Then longitudinal fissure uh, separating between the left and the right hemisphere. So that, uh, that's what you can see, uh, see here in this slide. Uh, that uh, um, so uh, this is a, a central fissure uh, between the uh, frontal lobe and the parietal lobe, and then this is the uh, lateral fissure. Uh, the uh, this is the frontal lobe, and this is the temporal lobe, and then this is a uh, longitudinal fissure. Uh, this is of course the uh, left hemisphere. And this is the uh, right hemisphere. So that, uh, uh, as you know, there are four major lobes in the human brain on the, uh, each hemisphere, actually. And that, uh, uh, in this case, you know, the uh, pink is the uh, frontal lobe, and the frontal lobe is associated with the uh, thinking, planning, motor control, and monitoring, and so on. And then this uh, blue uh, is a uh, parietal lobe uh, that is associated with the uh, sensation, uh, except the vision, and the spatial information processing. And also the uh, uh, parietal lobe, the uh, inferior parietal lobe around here is the uh, sensory association area to integrate sensory information. And then uh, the uh, temporal lobe, uh, that is a, uh, in a uh, uh, yellow green maybe, here is the uh, temporal lobe. And that uh, temporal lobe is associated with the uh, perception and memory. And then uh, the uh, occipital lobe uh, at the back of the brain uh, is a uh, uh, dedicated to a uh, visual information processing. Now, so this slide shows the uh, main gyri of the brain and the Broadman's areas. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, this is a lateral view of the brain, and this is a, a medial view of the brain. Now, that, uh, again, here is the frontal lobe. And that, uh, so the frontal lobe can be divided into four areas. Uh, here is a, a precentral gyrus. So this is the uh, uh, central fissure. And then uh, the other part uh, is uh, divided into three areas. This is the uh, superior frontal gyrus, and then this is the middle frontal gyrus, and the inferior frontal gyrus. And here is the uh, parietal lobe. Again, the uh, parietal lobe can be divided into four areas. Here is the uh, post central gyrus, and then this is the uh, superior parietal lobe. And then this is the inferior parietal lobe. Now the inferior parietal lobe is further divided into two areas. One is the uh, supramarginal gyrus, and the other is the angular gyrus. Now here is the uh, temporal lobe, and the uh, temporal lobe can be divided into three uh, main gyri. And that the uh, first one is the uh, superior temporal gyrus. The, uh, the one in the middle is the uh, middle temporal gyrus. The one in the bottom is the uh, inferior temporal gyrus. Now, this is the occipital lobe. And that, uh, in this class, um, I would like to use uh, um, 
uh, these uh, yeah, schemas here that the uh, yeah, occipital lobe is divided into three areas and the, uh, this is the primary visual cortex and then uh, this is the extra striate cortex but uh, 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 it can be further divided into the uh, two uh, areas one is the superior extra striate and the other is the inferior extra striate and then this is the uh, medial view of the uh, brain and that, uh, uh, here's the superior frontal gyrus and then uh, the uh, uh, here is a, a singular gyrus, and that, uh, actually uh, we'd like to further divide the singular gyrus into two areas, the uh, anterior singular, that is the anterior part of the singular gyrus, and the posterior singular gyrus. Okay, and the uh, paracentral gyrus, precuneus, and so on. Oh, and then that, uh, uh, well, uh, one thing is that uh, we're going to uh, discuss the, uh, uh, the uh, lateral sections uh, a lot, actually, in this class. And that uh, uh, even though, you know, we will uh, refer to uh, some parts of the uh, medial sections, but uh, uh, um, that, that, that uh, yeah, would be far less. And that uh, another important part of the uh, medial section is the, uh, here is a uh, parahippocampal gyrus. This is also associated with the uh, memory. And the, uh, uh, well, that's pretty much about it, I think. Now, this uh, part shows the uh, Broadman's areas. Uh, that uh, yeah, Covinian Broadman was a uh, German uh, physician, actually, and that uh, um, um, who uh, um, actually dissected the uh, brain, and then that uh, yeah, it's called a uh, cytoarchitectonics. But uh, yeah, his idea, his main idea, was that uh, yeah, if brain regions have uh, yeah, different functions, then you know that, uh, yeah, those areas should be different in terms of the uh, cell structures. And that, uh, yeah, that's how he investigated the uh, whole brain. And yeah, he actually divided it into uh, yeah, 52 different areas. Okay. Now, the uh, Broadman's areas are so important if you study neuroscience, actually human brain. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you can see here, you know, they look almost random, you know, to, uh, because these numbers correspond to the, uh, uh, the order of, of uh, his investigation. In other words, you know, when he studied the uh, human brain, you know, he cut the skull open, first of all, on top of the uh, human brain, and then started investigating these areas first. So first, number two, number three. Now that the uh, Broadman's areas one, two, three, uh, correspond to the uh, post-central gyrus here. Okay, and then he went to the, uh, uh, the uh, frontal lobe, and this is number four. And then back to the parietal lobe, number five. Back to the frontal lobe, number six. Parietal lobe again, so number seven. So this is basically, you know, the superior parietal lobe. Okay. And then uh, back to the frontal lobe, you know, number eight. So this is the uh, superior frontal gyrus. Okay. But uh, yeah, so on and so forth. So, you know, it, uh, yeah, it is very confusing. So, it, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, Broadman was the first guy who uh, systematically investigated, you know, the uh, cell structure of the uh, human brain, you know, it, uh, yeah, everybody had to follow his uh, uh, numbers. And it, uh, yeah, so if you study human brain, you know, you need to uh, remember all these Broadman numbers. However, in this class, you know, you don't have to. Okay, but uh, yeah, we're going to stay with the, uh, um, these uh, notations. Okay, so uh, yeah, please remember these names. Okay, that, uh, yeah, that is very important. Sometimes, you know, we need to discuss uh, yeah, the relationship between, you know, human cognition and the uh, brain structure. 
Okay, but uh, uh, just remember these areas. I mean, but uh, yeah, they are very systematic, so you know it should be easy to remember. Okay, and that uh, yeah, sometimes you know I might refer to the uh, Broadman numbers, but uh, yeah, I will do so uh, in conjunction with the uh, these terms. Okay, so that uh, yeah, you will know which area I'm talking about. Okay. But, uh, well, I mean, if you are interested, you know, I mean, by all means, you know, please feel free to uh, remember the Brodeman numbers too, okay? And then this is a, uh, this slide shows a rough sketch of the, um, uh, the human brain and actually uh, functions. So, that, uh, again, this is a frontal lobe and that, uh, um, the uh, precentral gyrus is the uh, primary motor cortex, okay? And then uh, the, uh, this is a, a supplementary motor area, and this is a, a premotor cortex, okay? So that, uh, um, uh, they are all associated with the uh, programming and the uh, planning of the uh, motor control. And then this area is a, a so-called a, a prefrontal cortex. So this is a, a, uh, associated with a, a higher level cognition, including a, a thinking and working memory and reasoning and decision making and so on. And that, uh, uh, this is the uh, Broca's area located in the uh, inferior frontal gyrus. The uh, Broca's area as you probably know, is associated with the speech or language production. And then uh, here's the parietal lobe, and the, uh, this is the post-central gyrus, uh, which is the somatosensory cortex. That uh, uh, the, in this somatosensory cortex, you know, we uh, process the uh, uh, information of touch. And then uh, this is a, a, a superior parietal lobe that is typically associated with a, a, a spatial information processing. And then the uh, inferior parietal lobe is closely associated with the uh, integration of sensory information. And then here is a, a temporal lobe. So a, a, in the middle of the uh, uh, superior temporal gyres, uh, lies the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, primary auditory cortex. And then uh, here's the uh, Wernicke's area. Uh, as you probably know, the Wernicke's area is associated with the uh, language comprehension. And that the uh, anterior part of the uh, parietal lobe is associated with memory. And then uh, the uh, inferior part of the uh, parietal, uh, temporal lobe, I'm sorry, is associated with the uh, object recognition. And then here's the uh, occipital lobe. And again, the occipital lobe is dedicated to visual information processing.